Okay, good morning, everyone. You're very welcome to Reboot My Business through My Business Development Plan 2020. Uh, we're delighted to welcome you to this 10 part series. My name is Michael Bosnay, and I'm delighted to be with you here today with a team from Griffith College, Dublin, Cork, and Limerick. And we're delighted to be doing this webinar series in association with Chambers Ireland. We invite you to interact through social media uh, with us, follow Griffith's channel and look out for hashtag Reboot20. Uh, please share your stories and please share your questions throughout. We do have a Q&A function, which my colleague Anthony will be managing in the background. And we will also be taking some questions on air if there's time. If we don't get to any questions during today's webinar, we will take those um, offline and produce uh, resources on the website. Please feel free to let us know if there's any content that you would like to be developed during this series. This series is for you. It's designed for SME businesses throughout Ireland, many of who are part of the Chambers. Um, I'm delighted to be welcomed by a host of people today um, and I'm go now going to pass you on to my colleague Geraldine McGinn to introduce uh, our speakers for today. Hello, good morning everyone. Sorry about that. Um, good morning everybody and welcome to the series of webinars. Uh, my name is Geraldine and over the, num the last number of years I've owned and managed a number of small businesses and now I'm director of this program director for this program here in Griffith. I'd like to draw your attention to the supporting workbook that's available. It's available on the website there that you can use to chart your progress uh, through these challenging times and reflect on the material as it's delivered to you each day. And um, the benefit of the workbook is that it will assist you to, to jot, jot down thoughts and ideas as they come into your head as you're listening to some of the sessions. We're all here to support you. Um, my email address is on the site. You're welcome to make contact with us and we'll help you in whatever way we can. Um, we are facing all facing into an unusual May bank holiday weekend. So just remember, we're here on Tuesday morning as well. So when, when you'd like to join us. So right for now, I'd like to welcome um, Ian Talbot, CEO and Chair, Chair for Chamber Ireland and past alumnus of Griffith College, who has just come directly from a meeting with the Taoiseach's office. So, you know, we're all in this together and he's going back to the same immediately after this. And after that, Tomás McGuckagón, Director of Academic Programmes here in Griffith, he would like to welcome you to the programme. Thank you. Hello, good morning, everybody. Um, I think the, uh, yeah, I just, I'm just getting the commands on the screen to start my video, so hopefully you'll see Thank now. Thank you, Ian. There we go. Thank you very much. Uh, well, uh, as Geraldine said, I'm the Chief Executive of Chambers Ireland, and we're delighted that we're able to collaborate with Griffith College on this. Uh, if we go back a, a couple of months, it seemed like a couple of years ago, we were actually talking to Griffith College generally about some things we might look to do together. And little did we know uh, what was ahead of us even at that time. And uh, the speed at which we've been able to put this program together is absolutely phenomenal. And you know, it really shows how businesses and the education sector collaborating together can be so effective and can do things at speed, something that wasn't necessarily appreciated in the past. Um, I really want to thank uh, Michael, Geraldine, Tomas, and the rest of the team, Sinead and so on, at Griffith College for their efforts to put this together. And I have to say that they've spurred us on as much as we've spurred them on uh, to deliver this. Uh, we're all in business together. We've brought out a survey this morning um, of nearly 1,400 businesses that says 85% of businesses have had to close in some shape or form uh, as a result of the COVID-19 crisis. And we're trying to focus now on what we need to do to reopen. Uh, there's a lot of information in the survey about the costs that companies are suffering and the costs they will incur to reopen their business and collect debts and so on. Uh, really challenging, but this business development plan to reboot your business program uh, will really help you to assemble the right thoughts and actions to help reboot your business. So we're, we're, it's a business program being delivered by business people working with a very business focused college. As Geraldine said, I'm a, an alumnus of Griffith College. Um, I did my chartered accountancy exams through them many years ago and uh, certainly an experience that has stood exceptionally well to me um, throughout my career. So with that, uh, we're looking for this course to be delivered in a fast and flexible way. We're looking for your engagement throughout 
uh, want to thank everyone again for their engagement and for those of you that have signed up for it as well. And I hope you find it really valuable. So I'll hand it back to Geraldine. Thank you very much. Um, we'd now like to uh, introduce Tomas Makokogan. Hello. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, Geraldine. Uh, this is Tomas uh, coming from a bedroom, but just with the background of Griffith College's campus in Dublin behind me. It's better than the bedroom. I can assure you of that. It's an enormous privilege for us in Griffith College to actually meet and to be able to present directly to business owners and managers. We're a business ourselves. We know some of the challenges, but we also know we've been very lucky in that we've been able to stay, well, stay open in terms of delivering our programs, at least online. And we know the challenges for others are, are greater. I'd like to thank James and Ian in Chambers, Ireland for the opportunity to do this together over the next 10 seminars and three weeks or so. I'd like to thank the combined team of both our institutions, really all the people behind who made it possible to get the word out and to put the technology up and more particularly to choose what we're going to be able to contribute. It's wonderful today to have Shona here today from Chambers and Dennis from Griffith, both with backgrounds in business to share those combined perspectives. But more than anything else, I want to thank you every single person who's decided to use their space on the computer at home today for this, to take time out and to negotiate whatever is needed to make this space available in your lives to, to tune in today and hopefully other days as well. So thank you. We see it as important that we get it right, that we're on message. We, we say things that are appropriate and are helpful. And the team here, are delighted to take all the queries and to fine tune this so that it works for you. I'd also like to pay particular thanks and congratulations to Ian and James on securing funding to also help the sector in terms of providing support, feedback and guidance on business development plans. So I think this is hugely, hugely beneficial. So when you've jotted down your points, as Geraldine said in the notebook, the fact that you can actually then seek professional advice and a sounding board to say, will that work? What do you think? And that independent view, just to make sure you're on the right track or to challenge you if you're not, but to guide you so you can open up and reboot with confidence. From Griffith's point of view, we're delighted also to let you know about Geraldine's course. Geraldine's course is a certificate in SME management, small and medium enterprise management. It's an accredited program from QQI and it takes about 250 hours of your mental effort. But I don't believe there's anybody for the last four, five, six weeks that hasn't spent 40 hours a week thinking about nothing else but their business. So that's the 250 hours anyway. So our challenge really and the opportunity is when you've written up your plans and thought about them, why not consider submitting those for academic award and saying, here are my plans now. They've been run by somebody else. I think these are good. I'd like to submit them. It's only, you know, 3000 words. It's not huge and it doesn't have to be in just a word document. It could be files you have or thoughts you have or diagrams or whatever you think is going to derive your business. We will then consider that independently and very happily for any business plan that makes sense to you or anybody else, award a certificate in SME management. I'd also like to thank QQI, the National Qualifications Body, for their wholehearted support for you as well in this regard. So if you want, when you've thought it through and written it down, to have a nationally accredited award on the framework from QQI and from Griffith, just let us know. I have a simple email, it's tomas at griffith.ie and you'll have all the other email addresses of the other. But more than anything else, I want to finish by saying thank you. Thank you for taking the time today to join us. And I really hope that the next 10 sessions are helpful for you and that you benefit from them. Best of luck rebooting your business. We hope to be able to support you when you're back. Whatever line of business you're in, enjoy it. Thank you.
thank you so much Tomas and Ian and Geraldine. Um, for anyone who's just joined, you're very welcome. Um, we're delighted to be providing this uh, initial 10 part series for you called Reboot your business through your business development plan in association with Chambers Ireland. Um, we do invite you to interact through social media, uh, through hashtag Reboot20, and also through the Q&A button, which is being monitored by Anthony today, my colleague. Um, now, without any further ado, I'm delighted to welcome our two speakers today. Uh, we have Shona McManus, who is an MBA, the president of the Drogheda Chamber, and also the CEO of and owner of Osborne Recruitment, and also Dennis Coleman, who is a lecturer with Griffith College and also the CEO and owner of InnoChan Solutions. Uh, he is a supply chain consultant and also coach in behavioral um, ana analytics. Um, we are, they've also both set up businesses during the recession, and I'm delighted to welcome them today, starting with Shona. Um, Shona, you're very welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael, um, and good morning to everybody. I'm delighted to be here this morning um, and delighted I've been asked by Griffith College to, to attend the webinar this morning and to share uh, our story so far. So I hope I can offer some, um, uh, I suppose, tippets, et cetera, of, as to where we've come from over the last couple of weeks and where we're at now. Um, usually when I'm speaking, I do tend to talk in, a, in quite an honest way as well, and I'm happy to take any questions afterwards um, if anybody would like to follow up with me any further. So as Michael said, my name's Shona McManus. I am the president of the Drogheda Chamber, um, but in my day job, I'm actually the CEO and owner of a recruitment firm called Osborne. Um, and so to share our journey and my story with you, what I'd like to do, if it's okay, is just to take it back a little bit to when I became the CEO and owner of Osborne because as it happened that was as we were coming out of the last recession um, so on April Fool's Day 2013 it was at that stage when I actually took over the company um, we were six people uh, in one location um, and turning over just under a million euro at the time so as a recruitment firm specialist recruitment firm we specialized in um, office accountancy recruitment, um, executive and um, technical engineering recruitment as well. Um, over the last couple of years, as I said, we took, the, took over the business during the coming out of the recession. It was a very, very difficult time. And the company was in a lot of difficulty as well from a financial perspective. So we had a big job to do, but we had a really strong team um, and a very strong ambition as well in terms of where we wanted to go and a very clear focus. So I suppose, uh, the years went on with a great plan and when we got to January 2020 of this year we had gone from being one office we had gone from being at that turnover just one under one million to being and six staff to being 65 staff having eight locations uh, one of which was in Toronto um, our head office still in Dublin um, uh, over 220 temporary staff out working as well a very very strong client base lots and lots of jobs on as most businesses were very confident come in January, February, the year was looking bright for everybody. It was going to be a great year for 2020 for most people. Um, and at this point, we were a multi-award winning recruitment firm, um, specializing in executive, executive appointments, office support, accountancy and finance, IT, technical engineering and healthcare recruitment. So we were in a very, very strong position in January after seven years of, of um, really great work together. Some highs, some lows, blood, sweat, tears, successes, failures, everything, certainty, uncertainties, the whole lot. Um, and then we hit into February of this year. I think you'd all recall come January, February, we started to hear the, the rumblings of, of the, um, the pandemic and COVID-19. We we're all watching it on the news as it unfolded. Um, myself, I'm a mom of two girls. Um, and in February, around I think it was around the 15th of February, myself and my two daughters, we went off on our first holiday ever on our own. Um, and we went to Paris just for a couple of nights. But as I landed into Paris, into Charles de Gaulle Airport, the severity and I suppose the reality of what was coming towards Ireland at that point hit me as we got off the plane as a mum with my two children beside me and most people around me were wearing masks. Um, so I, we had a great couple of days away. It was a fantastic holiday and, and how lucky were we to be able to get away before all this happened. Um, but I think that's when the reality, although I had been watching what was going on globally, that's when the reality of what was coming towards Ireland hit me. Um, and so we came home, got back into work after a lovely couple of days off and March then was upon all ourselves in Osborne as well as every other business in Ireland and then the school started to close down 
restricted movement. Uh, businesses stopped transacting as such. Uh, their business levels start reducing as a result as we're a recruitment firm. Recruitment went on hold. Um, at the beginning of March, we would have had, coming out of February and beginning of March, we would have had over 400 permanent jobs live with our customers across Ireland. Um, and that pretty much overnight went down to a very, very low level, um, well under 100 jobs open overnight. Um, so we really went into quite a, a landslide. A number of our companies that we're working with also had to start letting staff go. We were hearing this on the news as well. Temps were also let go, unfortunately. Um, not all of them, but some were. Um, so in, in, in short, in summary, like most businesses, our business took a massive landslide in March. Um, and we really had to work quickly to see, right, what, where are we now? What are we going to do? There's a huge level of responsibility with 65 staff, over, well over 200 temporary staff out working. We have a responsibility to our clients. We've got eight locations, eight offices. Um, so a lot of sleepless nights started kicking in, a lot of uncertainty about what does the future hold? How long is this going to happen? A lot of cash plan scenario forecasting started happening as well with myself and my team. Um, how long can we hold this for? Um, our staff were worried about where they going to keep their jobs, etc. So um, um, really, come if you recall, I said April Fool's Day back in 2013, which people laugh at when I say I took over the company in April Fool's Day 2013. By April Fool's Day 2020, I was sitting at my kitchen table going, how did this just happen in the last seven years? Things were going so well. But it just goes to show in business that anything can come at you at any point and you have to be ready, in my belief, to be agile and to pivot and to be able to get clarity very quickly and to move forward. Um, we were in the lucky position that given the nature of what we do, when we sat back and really looked at, okay, what's our survival strategy here? What's our new business development plan going to be? What's the capability within our business and what are our customers looking for right now? And indeed, what's the market looking for right now? We, could, we came up with a plan of action. So immediately, come, if I reverse back to kind of beginning of March, we started pivoting pretty quickly. Uh, we didn't waste any time overthinking or trying to perfect things. Um, we just got into it looking at the market, looking at what the needs were. And we pivoted our business right around. As If you recall, I said overnight, most of our business from office support, accountancy, so a lot of technical engineering, not all, some IT, not all, and executive appointments, not all of them again, but a lot of them went on hold. Um, so at the time we were working within healthcare, but we really ramped up that side of the business. So we pivoted strongly into the healthcare space, um, which gave us a huge sense of purpose as well, because we felt we were helping around the front line, kept our staff motivated, every day um, and of course for me um, one of my major things as a business leader and manager is to be able to keep all of our staff that we've, we've spent an awful lot of careful time over the years building a really superb team um, and great great people who work in our company so when I go to bed at night time most even before COVID-19 happened one of my terrors would always be to make sure that we can you know the survival of the business keep all the jobs for people keep everybody safe and so here I am here I was with this massive my one of my massive fears on my doorstep um, so for me, over the last couple of weeks, um, it really is longer than a couple of weeks now, over the last two months, my focus really has been in terms of our staff and keeping all of our staff in jobs. And how do we do that whilst trying to get the business back to a break even point? I'll share the detail of that with you in a moment. Um, and also whilst servicing our customers and helping our customers and developing a new customer base and the new market that we find ourselves in. So we really had to pivot. There were some things that we did um, in terms of, I feel that we're, we're very important over the last couple of weeks, and it's by no means perfect, and, and we're changing it every day, trying to perfect it. Uh, and we don't have a crystal ball either, but uh, we, these are the things that I guess we'll, we will continue to have to do as we, we move forward in the journey. So aside of looking at our business development plan and our survival strategy, um, we looked at also our, our core goal for the business now, so that we could get all of our team onto one goal, moving forward in one direction, with a very strong sense of purpose every day when they came to work, that they were motivated, um, and that they knew what their job was when they came to work, well, when they came to work at their kitchen table or in their bedrooms, because all of a sudden we're all working remotely. We've never worked remotely before. So this was a really new thing for us to learn and we're still learning it and trying to get it right. So getting that management structure, once we had a purpose in place, we had our goal, we had our vision in place, we got a purpose, realigned our purpose 
then got a very strong management structure in place every single day. So our teams would huddle and rehuddle twice a day. We've senior leadership meeting teams every day. And then we also have a company um, conference call once a week as well, where we have very open, honest communication with our whole team. So everybody knows what's going on all of the time. Um, and that really feeds into the cultures and the values of our business as well. Um, and also then that enables our team to be able to share updates with our customers as well and for us to share knowledge between us. Um, so all 60 of us now, 65 of us get onto the call once a week. So that strong management structure and having that strong communication structure has really helped in terms of when we did move to remote working, actually giving people strong direction, making sure people felt connected, making sure people are okay because there's a lot of a staff, our staff who would live alone as well. So they're at home alone now for the last six or seven weeks um, with very little contact with people other than their day-to-day -day work contact and family contact via webinars and such like we're doing today. So that's been very important to us um, and also making sure that we remained agile as well as having a little bit of fun. So when we do do our conference calls, we dress up sometimes and um, we are now organizing a quiz etc for our staff to keep our staff together and keep our culture going remotely which is really important to try to understand how to do that um, and one of the other things that i found on our journey over the last couple of weeks is we try to figure out how we're moving forward and how to get the business to break even point i felt i found that given myself time and space to think to, to learn this new reality that we're in, to talk to people and to talk to people who are running businesses and managing businesses and teams and are sharing the same worries and stresses and huge sense of responsibility that I feel is very important. So over the last couple of weeks, just like you're all doing today and will do over the next couple of weeks um, on the, the, the webinar and the college course with Griffith, I've attended lots of webinars with leaders um, where I could learn, give me space to think, to create a new strategy um, and just hear what's going on out there for people and feel I guess that I'm also supported and motivated as well because I feel that business leaders and managers have a lot of a lot on their shoulders right now which can lead to anxiety and what we need right now is a, a clear mind and a clear mental state so we can see the path forward it's very hard to see ahead of us it's very uncertain but as best we can we need to keep our minds clear so we can set new uh, business development plans so through all of that and through pivoting over March into April, April was a tough month, um, a very tough month. And I don't doubt May is going to be very, very hard as well. Um, and all we can do is continue to do as we have been doing and, and change and move with the markets as they're um, changing. So to share with you where we've closed out at the end of April after all of that work um, over the last couple of weeks, we are, our turnover is down 60%. Um, had we not pivoted the way we did, our turnover would have been down by 85, 90%. Um, so at least the pivoting of uh, the re-strategizing has helped, the quick pivoting has helped in the last couple of weeks um, to get us to at least be only down 60% of our turnover, which is a huge amount based on the cost base of our business, but it could have been a lot worse. Um, we're also in a position where we have built a, a, a good, I won't say strong, it's good pipeline for our month ahead in May. And our core focus now is break even point. It's just try to get to break even point, which is a large point. We're very grateful of the government supports that have been put in place as well. And absolutely, we've availed of them in terms of the temporary wage subsidy program as well um, for all of our staff to help us. Because if we didn't have that, we would be in a much worse off, much, much worse off position as well. So as we kind of move now into May after pivoting, we have a new line of business coming in. We will continue to try to find new lines of business. We're continuing to analyze the marketplace, our client base, speak to all of our customers, existing and lapsed customers as well, to see what's going on for them and to try and bring information and knowledge to all of our customers um, as the markets change and as we wait for new guidelines from government as well. Can we reopen? When can we reopen? Is it going to be safe to reopen, et cetera? There's so much uncertainty, so many questions businesses have, as well as try to, how do we generate money? How do we keep our staff employed. Um, again, due to the changes we made, we've been lucky in terms of having all of our teams still employed, all of our teams still working every day, motivated. Um, and it would be great now, I'm sure like all the rest of you feel, as if we could see ahead of us now and get some clarity on how long this is going to go on, it would be much easier to plan for, to plan our cash, um, our cash pipelines and forecasts and to, to plan our business lines. But that's very difficult, it's very hard to see around the corners at the minute for where we're at. Um, but what we do need to do, I guess, is to, as I said, keep calm mind, I believe, keep clarity. 
have a bit of fun with our teams as well. Um, but at, at, to, to, to get engaged in conversations and webinars like we're on today, whereby that gives us time and time out to think um, and to really set clear plans um, and to work together and to share information and knowledge together as well. Because together, I guess, businesses will re reboot and, and know how to come out of this together. We're all trying to figure it out. Um, we're all in the same boat. Um, I think I've, I've covered an awful lot there, just a conscious of time as well. Um, Dennis, I might come over to yourself, Dennis, uh, if that's okay. Yeah. Thanks, Shauna. <clears throat> there we go. I do exist. Thank you. Very interesting. Thank you very much, Shauna. Uh, yeah. Um, similar situation, I suppose. I was an April Fool, so I was a few days later um, when, I, <clears throat> when I set up. Uh, April 3rd, 2009, I decided to jump ship from a consultancy job and set up my own consultancy training organization. Um, they say timing is everything in setting up a business. Uh, I'm not sure what that, whether that's a positive or a negative, but from my perspective, what it meant was that I set up on a Friday on Monday, I met my local enterprise office because they support business startups and was essentially told about it. It was voodoo uh, because I was involved in coaching NLP and all that other sort of stuff. Uh, the following day, the Tuesday, was a budget, the emergency budget that essentially closed down all training budgets in every company in the, for the country. So here I am, a new business and nothing to sell, no, no clients. Um, but I'm stubborn. I stuck with it. 11 years later, I'm still there. And I think a lot of what I've discovered over the years are the type of things that, that Sean has, has mentioned there. And it's, it's evidence in what they've mentioned. The years I've, I've used the time to expand my, my skills, uh, my qualifications, my abilities, uh, to the point that, as, as, as uh, Michael said at the start, I have a my own business, uh, Inichin Solutions Limited. I managed to incorporate the business a couple of years ago. Um, I'm also a lecturer at a number of institutions, uh, Griffith in Dublin and Limerick, Institute of Carlo, Institute of Technology Carlo. Um, uh, I was a guest lecturer at DIT. Uh, I was a senior lecturer for the IPMM. I also lectured for Derby University in the past. And so, you know, I've kind of expanded an awful lot. I've also expanded all my um, behavioral science skills. So coaching, NLP, emotional intelligence, psychometrics, all that other stuff. As somebody once said, they congratulated me. There's 26 letters in the alphabet and I've managed to use all 31 of them just after my name. My son sent me a birthday card earlier this week and complained that he couldn't get all my letters on the, on the cover of the envelope. Um, it's interesting listen, listening to Shauna talking there and she's talking about her focus on her staff and the motivation of her staff and maintaining um, the direction of the business and she's talking about the finances and the, the turnover and so on. And that is the focus business owners have. That is where business owners are. Um, but today I want to start this process off with you by looking at something a little bit different. Um, and just as a background to that, I want to, I want to just explain a little bit that I mean, when I set up my business, my, my income from a business perspective went from over 80,000 a year down to five. And shortly after I set up my business, uh, my wife, who was a legal executive, her, she was put on a three-day week. So in recessionary times, we had two children in school, one coming up to leaving cert, one in junior cert, I think. Um, and, you know, the, the normal pressures of anybody that can have in, in times like this, how are we going to make ends meet? What's going to happen next? Where are we going? Um, just, I've just been reminded that I had slides and I forgot to put them up and share. That's clever. There. Um, so basically what we're, you know, the point I'm trying to make is that we're in a situation, I met people when I set up my business first and a very interesting conversation with a, with a, a business leader, a business director, a senior CEO of a company. I would have known him locally here in Carlo 
for a lot of years, very successful person. He was in the media every single week, local media every single week. He was involved in everything. Um, and he met me for a coffee one day. Uh, he wants to find out more about, quote, this coaching lark. And he wants to talk to me just in general. And out of the blue, he made a statement that has resonated with me for the last, what, 11 years now. Um, and that is, he said, you know, I have the loneliest job in the world. And it took me back a little bit because, I mean, he's a business owner, a CEO, senior guy, uh, big business, very popular. And he says, the loneliest job in the world. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, I've got my shareholders, my investors, and they want their money. They want their their slice of the cake. They want their they want to see that I'm doing stuff and making money for them. And I've got staff in these troubled times um, looking for reassurance in relation to their jobs and looking for more hours because partners, spouses, loved ones have, have been put on short time or lost their jobs or whatever. And he said, who do I turn to? Who do I talk to? I can talk to my accountant, but the accountant is only going to work with the numbers. And it's resonated with me. And again, as we're going through this process where, you know, as, as, as uh, Ian said earlier on, 85% of, of businesses surveyed uh, by Chambers Ireland have said today in, in that they've had to either shut down or scale back their businesses significantly. Shauna has alluded to the fact that she's spending time trying to, you know, juggle the fact that she, her, 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 her business is down 60% and she's trying to develop and keep her staff motivated, keep her staff going. A lot of the conversation, it was very interesting to listen to it, it couldn't have rehearsed it any better, was it's very much focused on my staff, my business, my staff, my business. There was very little conversation about the boss, about the person. So today, just to set this process up, as this is the first session, a um, couple of points I want to make clear to, to people um, as we go through this is we're focusing today on what you're, about your business, where are you now, where are you going, okay? First thing I want to say is this is not a lecture, okay? Yes, I lecture, and it's very easy to fall into a lecturing mode. Uh, there's enough people from Griffith and, and other places watching what I'm doing here. <laughs> They're very quick to flag if I'm, start, if I'm going off target. Um, it's not a lecture series. We're not going to teach you what to do. We're here to assist you. And that's it. The sessions that you're going to go through between now and the end of the process, and I'll be back on the last session to kind of bookend the process as we move, look to the future, um, is we're here to help you reflect, refocus, recalibrate, plan, and prepare. And that is, to, that is the nutshell. That is, the, is it in essence. We are all in the situation. Employees are in this situation, businesses are in this situation, and it's not just businesses in Dublin or Carlo or Cork or Limerick or Galway, it's businesses all over the world are in this situation. It's, it's really a case of, you know, the game has been called, the pitch has been cleared, the supporters have been sent home. There is nothing, and you can see by the look of me how much that I play, I play a lot of sport. Um, which I can tell you I don't. Uh, it basically, you know, we're all in the situation. It can be very easy to get caught up in the day-to-day. -day. It can be very easy to get caught up in the, I, I need to keep my staff motivated. I need to do these things. I need to look at the, the business figures. And they are very, very valid points. I'm not belittling them, and I am not in any way trying to say you shouldn't do that. But you have this book, there's the jotter that Geraldine mentioned. It's, on, it's available on the website. Um, use it for your thoughts. Use it to help plan. Use it in your reflections. Use it as you start to prepare where you're going to go next. Because this is, a, this is one of the few occasions that we can start. We can really go back and start. You may decide to change nothing. You may decide all I need is the go ahead and I open the doors and it's business as usual. That's fantastic if you can do that. You may decide I'd like to change something. 
But before you can do anything with your business, I want to go right back to the start. I want to start with you. And again, I go back to what Shauna pointed, what Shauna said. Shauna mentioned that she's focusing on her the motivation of her staff, keeping them busy, keeping them active, keeping them engaged, uh, reassuring them. Um, she's watching the bottom line. She's watching the, the money. She's keeping an eye on everything that's going on. She's in business management mode. I heard no comment about a lot of time being spent stepping back and thinking for herself, the business. And I'm not, it's not, it's just, it's just, I was just, I'm using it as an example as this is what happens. This is what business leaders do. This is what we do as business owners. I've done it as a business owner. I have got so caught up in, in the day to day stuff. This time last year, I mentioned I was a lecturer for the IPMM. IPMM went into liquidation last year, owing me a lot of money which I'll never see. And summer last year, summer, autumn last year, I had some very, very hard decisions to make. As I was going to throw the towel and that's it. Good luck. Forget it. I'm not doing this anymore. They're not playing fair. So why should I play fair? It's very hard. We take these digs. We take these situations personally. We are caught up in going after the next contract. We're watching the numbers. We're trying to make sure that next month's numbers are better than last month's numbers. And that's fine. That's our job. We're business owners. That's what we're there for. But we rarely get an opportunity to actually stop. And not just stop, but actually using a program like this, recalibrate, refocus, step back and say, well, what am I doing? One of the first teaching jobs I ever did as, as a teenager was I used to teach first aid. And first aid are obviously they're treat, treating people's illnesses, treating people's Ill injuries, um, you know, looking after people who are poorly or who are injured. And there's a, there's a thing we teach first aid, we teach all the treatments and then we'd come along and we'd say, okay, now we teach the proper stuff. And first aid as a, as, a, as a situation is actually quite a selfish system. And when I say selfish, I don't mean it, I don't mean it in the, possibly some of the, the normal ways we think of selfishness. It's selfish in so far as the first thing we teach anybody in first aid is look after yourself first. Make sure you're safe. Then you worry about the patient. And it's the same thing in the business. That CEO I met was in a lonely position because they were being pulled in all directions. Another CEO I met during the last recession, a director, sorry, a director of an organization, um, we sat down to have a meeting and she was Ex, you know, in, in very bad form, and she was giving out about the the state of the country, and she was giving out about the the government, and she was giving out about the national debt, and she was giving out about everything and anything. And at the time, I think the the figures that were being bandied about were about ninety billion to for the economy. And I said to her, after she talking for a while, I said, "Hang on a second. I said, in your bag right now, have you got 90 billion euro that'll fix the economy? And she stopped and she looked at me as if I had two heads, which I don't blame her. And she said, no, of course not, don't be stupid. I said, okay. I said, why are you worrying about something you have no control on? That sounds very, very simplistic. It sounds very facetious. Her, her response to that statement was, so what will I worry about? What do I worry about? And I said, worry about the things you can control. She went away and about four or five weeks later, she came back to me and she, she, she contacted me offline. And she said, I've been trying what you said. And you know something, I feel a heck of a lot better. We're, it's very easy with the media, with the stuff going on around us, to get caught in the groundswell, get caught in the curtain and get dragged along. And we're 
we're looking at our staff, we're looking at our finances, we're looking at the, the world, we're listening to what's happening, and we're so snowed under and bombarded when it does come to rebooting our businesses and getting things back up and running again, we're just going to launch back in. And we, I believe, will have missed an opportunity. The opportunity of a program like this, the opportunity of being able to just stop, take a breath, and let's begin. Let's think. Let's work out where are we going? What are we doing? What do I want to do? How can I do it better? There's a concept in business called Kaizen, continuous improvement. And Kaizen, the implication, the, the implication of Kaizen is you never are perfect. There's always something that can be done better. And this, this period of time, this period of, I don't like the word lockdown, lock in maybe is better, is actually extremely potentially beneficial, I believe, for business owners. I lecture business owners in, in various programs and offline we go into discussions about this sort of situation. Uh, about things like this and getting people the opportunity to actually step back and think to step back and reflect on where they are that's important so today i'm going to give you a challenge and that is i want you you've most people are familiar in business are familiar with swat a swat analysis it's one of the many tools used by businesses when setting up their business or business owners to set up a business as part of working out, the, looking at their company versus competitors versus the industry. And a lot of my students would use a SWOT analysis in tandem with a Pestel analysis to, as part of a dissertation research to analyze the industry that they're researching. I use, Pest, I use a SWOT analysis differently. Very simply, you, as a business owner, as a CEO, as a senior manager, as a middle manager, as an employee, in whatever context you are here in this program, it doesn't matter. This is something anybody can do, an individual can be doing. The trick is you have to be honest. I don't need to see the answers. Nobody needs to see the answers but you. But this will force you to think. Take time out over the next few days. Take some time. Get a sheet of paper. And as well as the first page and the, the, the jotter that accompanies this program, write down, answer these questions for, for you. Not your business, not your staff, not your accountant, not your industry. For you insert name here type of thing. What are your strengths? What do you do well? What's un what unique resources do you have? What do others see as your strengths? If you've done the strengths, which is positive, then look at the weaknesses. What can you improve on? What would you like to do differently? Where do you think you might fall short in your abilities as a business owner? But not on the business. This is on the person, the owner. What are others likely to see as a weakness? I did this with a person at one stage, and um, when they looked at the weaknesses, one of the weaknesses that they, they identified was that others might see that they don't delegate enough that they take too much on themselves, just as an example. And I managed to have a, get a conversation with some, of the, with some of their employees later and away from, the, away from them. And I just asked a question. Is there something your manager could do better? And almost to a person. The word was delegate. Give us more stuff. Give us, trust us. We, we've got this. Now, this happens. Why that delegation sometimes doesn't happen? I'm using that delegation as an example. Why it sometimes doesn't happen is because business owners get caught up too much in what's going on in the day that it's hard to step back. It's hard to step out and let somebody do it. 
Some people are brilliant at it. Some people are good at it. Some people can't let go of the reins. So this opportunity here, I actually, and it's, I, I've had some people look at me very funny when I say this. We're in a situation that's not of our making. We're in a situation that we have zero control over. We are at the, at the mercy, at the, at, the, at the, yeah, to an extent at the mercy of the health professionals of this country and a microorganism called COVID-19. We have time. We can look at our business, we can strategize our business, and we can do that 24-7, and we're still in the same situation that we were in before we started. So, use the opportunity. Step back. Reflect. What do you, what do, you do this test on yourself as a, as a business manager, as an owner? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What opportunities do you think you may have? For personal development do you need training somewhere something that you haven't had time to look at over the last last number of months or years because you've been too busy in your business i think the whole world right now is going to be going through is going through a period of recalibration as well as just the COVID. it's forcing companies it's forcing countries to think milan last week started talking about making the center of the city car free Venice is talking about changing the way the liners come into the port and actually having them come into a port further up the coast and then bus are bring people into Venice and smaller boats so the big liners aren't coming into Venice anymore. Pe people, businesses, industries, things are being looked at differently. You spend most of your day thinking and trying to manage your business in, a, in this environment. In the hours that you're on this program, I invite you and I, I encourage you to take time out. Embrace the, the business, embrace the, the program, but also look after yourself. In, as in the first aid situation, if you don't look after yourself, you're only putting yourself at danger. I used to love doing it if I was setting up a, an accident scene for somebody, catching the person who ran headlong into, a, into the situation. I hide a wire under the patient, and as soon as the person came in, put their hand on the patient, I tapped them on their shoulder and I'd say, lie down. You've just been electrocuted. They hated me setting these things up, but I was evil. The thing is the same. You now have this opportunity, you've been given this lens to step back and look at things. I'm not going to tell you what to do. You will know what to do. You will be guided, you will be helped, you will be challenged, you will be, we will put all the resources over the next number of weeks behind this to make sure that this works for you. But come into it in the right frame of mind. Come into it aware of who you are. Aware of what you want, because it's your business. And then go from there. Once you've got the, the, the SWOT analysis done for yourself, and the key is you be honest with yourself. Nobody's going to see it but you. I've seen people do these, and strengths, they put down two, and weaknesses, they put down two pages, because we can be very negative. Be honest with yourself. What are your strengths? This is not going to confession, where we have the same run-of-the-mill sins that we throw out every time. This is actual reflection on you. You have skills. You've built a business. You've brought a business. You've applied staff. You are managing this successfully. You're making profit. You are overcoming difficulties and challenges, supply challenges, daily challenges, supply chain challenges, all these things. You're dealing with all of these every day of the week. You're dealing with the competitors. You're finding new businesses. When Brexit was starting to come in, you started looking around maybe at new markets or it's in your plans to look at new markets. That's all still there. All that's happened is we have an enforced pause. Use the pause. Use it. It's something like Father Trendy now. Uh, use the 
use the time efficiently. In the next section you're going to have next week, you're going to start looking at what, you're going, what you want to develop, where you want to go from here, where, what you want to actually focus on. So for this coming week, focus on you. Focus on what you want. Focus on who you are. Focus on who your business is. Not your staff. Not your shareholders. Not the bank. Not the accountant. Sorry, accountants. You. Because once you know who and what you are, what you're about, you can then start going, the next question is, what do I want? One of the hardest questions I ask a business, just to, fin just to finish, one of the hardest questions I ask a, a business owner is, what do they want? Nine times out of ten, they will, if I ask that question, they will answer the question back by saying, well, I don't want this, and I don't want that, and I don't want the other thing, and I don't want something else. And I'll stop them. Every time, I will stop them. And I'll say, that's not what I asked you. I asked you, what do you want? I didn't ask you what you didn't want. It sounds silly, but it just shows the focus. If you know who you are, you will quick, much quicker work out what you want. Your business will know what, you will know what to do for your business, and then you can drive your business forward. Okay, prepared to, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to come back in, Michael. Thank you so much, Dennis. And thank you so much, Shona. And um, those are both fantastic presentations. So as we said at the beginning, this, uh, this is very much a how-to series. Um, we invite you to comment uh, throughout. And we also ask, uh, invite you to download the workbook, which is very simple. It asks three questions. The ideas that I can take from today, how can I develop and what will these, how will these ideas work in my business? So we do have time for some Q&A, so I'd like to invite um, Shona and Dennis um, to come back in and we'll, uh, we'll go through the Q&A. Um, just to say, if we don't get through all of the Q&A today, we will respond to the questions. We'll reach out to the speakers and uh, share your questions with them. Um, so just add in Shona as well. So um, first question, um, from John McLaughlin. Uh, thank you very much, John. You're very welcome to the webinar today. Hope you enjoyed it. So I think it's for Shona. Um, where do you pitch your break-even point? Is it with or without deferred payments? Uh, for me, it's without currently, without deferred payments. So we're in a situation as a business where we're self-funded. We've no debt, we've no bank loans, etc. So we're in a lucky position like that. Um, and we haven't deferred any rental payments or anything yet. That's obviously, uh, it's not on the table right now. Okay, and Dennis? Like, like Shona, we're self-funded as well. So I, I, if I, my business can't afford it, I don't... Um, I don't basically do it uh, if it doesn't pay for itself. And that's the way it has been since I started. That was my, that was my model from the start because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm smaller business than, than Sean's is. I'm a, a, a micro enterprise, so I don't have the resources, the overheads that I, a lot of other businesses have. What I focus on instead was building up, um, a, building up a set of associates that I can draw on if I need it. But I, it's, it's very much a one person situation, so I don't have to worry about a lot of this. I did do the job, invoice the job, job started. Mm. Okay. But I'll just add in there as well, um, uh, in terms of obviously as business leaders, we need to be clever about, the, and we have a, a duty of care and diligence as well around our cash flow management as well. So we can't run it back down to a zero and have no money to pay mm. anybody, et cetera. Um, but I do believe in uh, certainly running the business ethically and if the cash is there to keep the flow of cash going because we do need it in the economy. So if we all stop paying everyone, we're all goosed. Nothing's going to happen. So as we have it, we are continuing to, 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 to pay our suppliers, to pay rents, to, we haven't deferred any payments, etc. cetera. Um, but if we needed to, that's a different story for business if a business needs to. Okay. That's brilliant. Um, absolutely. Cash is king, as they say. Um, we did a course ages ago. I'm a small business owner as well. And uh, that was something that was drilled into us as well at the beginning. Um, so there's a question for Shona and, and for Dennis as well. Um, can you recommend any additional resources or maybe webinars that uh, would be of interest at this time that you found useful? 
Okay, so as I was saying earlier on, I think it's fantastic that people have signed up to do this course. And I was joking yesterday, but only half joking. I'm actually considering doing it myself because it just gives lovely time out to think and time out of the diary, as Dennis was saying, for yourself to think about things. So you're on a winner already attending this course. Um, the other thing I would say is all of your local chambers, uh, most local chambers are running webinars. Um, and if your local chamber is not running a webinar that's of interest to you, there will be a chamber close by to you that is going to be running. A, a webinar that might be of interest, whether it's around upskilling and social media product platforms or platforms like Zoom or leadership uh, uh, webinars, etc. Um, the institute of directors is running webinars. Well, I mean, there's so many of them out there. I guess the key is just trying to find them. Of where are they? Um, things I typically follow are specific to my industry. For example, there's the National Recruitment Federation for recruiters. They're hosting a number of webinars that are free. And the other thing is, I'd say, look to your local skill net. So skill nets, and there is a COVID-19 funding at the moment, which is allowing skill nets to um, run a lot of courses that are either um, uh, free or partially, very well funded, let's say, or free. Uh, I mean, there's so much resources available out there. I mean, everybody and government levels have, and government have, and the education side of things, have put so much available for people. You just have to find your way through it to find what's relevant to you from either a course point of view or a webinar perspective. Yeah, I, I agree um, uh, with, with, with what you're saying, Sean. I mean, the, this program is 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 phenomenal. Looking at the structure of it or the the agenda in it, it's, it's fantastic. And the fact that it's not a a lecture series, it's it's not going to be talked to. It's you do you do the work. You it's helping. It's an assistant situation, which is fantastic. Uh, similar to to. To, to Sean, I'm, I'm I suppose because I'm in the behavioural analytics field, I'm or behavioural science field. I'm I'm looking at a lot of the t stuff that goes on in that area, and there's a company, for example, that I've come across recently. I've, I've trained with them actually over the tr transition into the new year. Um, it was called Genus International. They have a number of programs they're running at the moment free, which are designed for resilience, building um, emotional intelligence within a in a COVID environment. Which is they're all free. They are one hour sessions. The ones that I've that I've seen and attended. The Derek McCann runs them, and they're they're here in Ireland. They're they're quite good. Uh, they're. They're fun as well as, as interesting and learn a lot. And they do actually provide you nuggets of information. They provide you the tools just to, to basically help along the way. There, there are nuggets available in all these situations. Majority of them are free. And the ones I've seen, I don't particularly tend the ones I have to pay for because I see that as profiteering a little bit uh, in this current situation. But um, yeah, the, the Chambers of Commerce do things. The Some of the LEO offices are doing programs. Um, as local enterprise offices, there are situ uh, or things like uh, some of the colleges, like like Griffith and other colleges, are doing bits and pieces as well. It's just keep it, keep an eye out locally, um, and by all means, I mean I, I'm quite open. If people want to come and talk to me later, I can always see if I can point them in a direction, find out a bit more of what they're looking for, and maybe point them in a direction that might help them. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, there's a lovely comment here for um, Shona from Paula Byrne. Um, just very honest, Shona, you're a dynamo. You've really inspired me today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you mightn't say that at nighttime when you see me <laughs> stressed and worried. <laughs> the same as everybody else at the moment. But thank Absolutely. you. That's lovely. Thank you. Uh, question for Dennis. Did you find NLP? I'm presuming that means natural language processing or something. Neuro linguistic programming. Neuro, -lingu neuro linguistic programming. Um, useful for his business. Did Dennis find NLP useful for his business? Yes. Uh, it is, it's actually helped me in a lot of situations over the years. Um, I came across it in a, when I was learning my coaching initially, when I did my first coaching program, it was touched on. And I was one of these people who, don't I don't do things by half. I don't don't just do a course. I go and I uh, get under get into the engine and have to learn how to drive the machine basically. So I went away and I trained in, in NLP and I actually went to I was lucky enough to go to California and spend three weeks overlooking the Pacific one July with the the founders of NLP learning from them to become a trainer. And yeah, it has helped me dramatically because NLP is a essentially is a way of thinking. It's a, it's a understanding the world. It's really looking at the world in a different way and changing perspectives allows you to look at things in different, persp different 
perspective. So one of the things, for example, we, we use as a tool, a, a simple tool called perceptual positions, where we re-look at a situation from three different angles. So, for example, if I was to reflect on on the conversation uh, with with anybody, with, with Sean this morning, then I will look at it from what I said, what I did, then I'll look at it from what I believe she might have, Sean I might have heard and seen, and then I might look at it from a perspective of somebody standing off watching the two of us having a conversation. And it's that ability to look at things in different ways gives a different perspective, which can help in a business situation, it can help in a crisis situation, and it can help in a, just to get a greater understanding and, and a, a little bit more control, less stressful way of looking at things in business. Yeah, definitely it's out. That's great. Thank you, Dennis. Um, and that question came through from Brendan Kerens. Thank you so much for your question, Brendan. Please keep them coming. Um, we hope to see you back at the next session. Um, so um, a comment here uh, from Dave. Uh, question for Shona. Is Dave Barry, is your new singular company goal specifically healthcare or business focused? Um, no, it's not specifically healthcare focused. Um, it's, it, there's a heavy element of healthcare right now, as you can imagine, because there's quite an emergency. So we've really got behind the, um, the COVID-19 frontline. Um, but the, the rest of our business still continues to, to operate. So we are still doing recruitment at a, a much more reduced level, but across accountancy and finance, across office, across executive appointments um, and technical engineering IT as well. There is still some recruitment going on out there. Um, it's not as much, but there are still companies um, that are operating remotely and hiring people. There are still companies within essential services who need staff immediately, straight away. And there's new, very innovative companies coming to the market right now who need staff to get ramped up um, with all the new products that are specifically designed around this COVID-19 and how we're moving forward, etc. So a lot of our clients are innovating in those areas. And on top of that, we've also looked at, when we've spoken to our clients, how can we help them and what do they need? So what we've broken down some of our services. So for example, we, we do interview panels and we sit in interview panels, we do screening. Um, so we've broken down our service solutions and try to be innovative and just listen to what our clients want and need and then be there with the key skills that we have. So we're the type of company that will only do what we're actually really good at and can deliver on our promises um, rather than, but as I said earlier on, it's not a time for perfection either. You know, we want to jump in and help and we want to have a strong sense of purpose and be helping in this environment as, as well as keeping the business there and surviving but we also want to add value right now in Ireland so we've tried to do whatever we can around that that's within our um, resources I suppose. That's brilliant thank you Shona. Um, a question from Irenaeus um, McCaffrey Daly. John really enjoyed your thoughts and views. Dennis? Uh, enjoyed your thoughts and views. I'm a manager of a non-profit organization and have 33 staff and worry constantly as I'm concerned that I'm going to run out of money. I reflect all the time, but I'm very nervous about the future. Do you have any advice? Well, potentially your, fo uh, a focus, your, your, your focus plan from this process could be to develop a plan to, to deal with the, the looking at the future but i mean we are where we are right now a first question i would ask somebody in a situation like this is uh, what do you want to what do you want to do because you're worried about all about a lot of different things going on um which is which is normal everybody is um so what is it you can do right now What's available to do right now? What step, small step, uh, as Sean mentioned, what can we do to maybe keep the cash flow moving, to do something, to get something circulating, something moving? A small step doesn't have to be a big bang because people tend to focus on a big solution when just a small baby step will become a bigger step and a bigger step and so on. So right now, what's the immediate thing you could do today that will take you a step forward? And then once you have that done, What's the next step forward and the next step? Just slow it down, focusing on specific, very specific little tasks. Break it right down into bite-sized pieces. Thanks, Dennis. I completely agree with that as well. Um, question from Joe Collins. Thank you for this morning. Can you please give me an example of what you mean by resources? And uh, do you have uh, that? The, sorry, excuse me. What, um, can you please give me an example of what you mean by what resources do you have available to you? 
Okay. Uh, is that one geared towards myself, Michael, I think? Is it, it, with the, is that based on my answer? Or it, doesn't, it, it doesn't, it isn't addressed to either of you. I, it might have come in during your, your discussion. I'm not sure. Um, from, from our point of view, we have the, the workbook online and then the resources in your business. I'm sure Shona can, can give you some insight around that now. Yeah, oh, absolutely. So for me in my particular business, the resources that are available to me that I see are cash flow, time, knowledge, our people, our skill set, um, everything that is in front of us that can help us to generate business and do business together. Um, that would be all the places where I see. Um, and also the other major one in terms of a resource, because it's a very important one right now and we can get bogged down. It is, but I see having a positive mental attitude and having clarity of thought as being a very key resource to people right now, uh, whether that's from the individual leader, as Dennis was talking about earlier on, uh, through into the, the staff, because obviously, and your, your, your people who work with you, because obviously if people have clarity um, and are in good mental health, and if they're motivated, they'll naturally be driven to be more productive, therefore be more productive. The business generates more and it's, it's a full cycle, really. It's an efficiency cycle. But um, for me, they would be my resources that I talk about. I don't know, Dennis, if you want to add anything to that. I'm yeah, I think, yeah. No, I think it's, it's pretty much exactly what you're saying, what you're saying, Sean. I mean, and the only point I would add is you talked about kind of the, the staff and the, 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 and, and the cash flow and the stuff that you have. And the time is obviously a big one because time we all have. There's, there's still 168 hours in the week that wasn't taken out by COVID. That's still there. Mm -hmm. We just have to use it. Um, on top of that, there's the point of, I suppose what I'm trying to get people to do is we are our own resource that we very rarely tap into. We spend too much time trying to run the business as an external entity and we don't spend enough time tapping into what skills we have. My own personal example, I mean, I've spent the last 10, 12 years studying, gathering qualifications. I'm working towards a doctorate at the moment. I can't stop. Uh, and continuously gathering information. And actually, recently I stood back in my office and looked at the stuff that I had done. And I kind of looked at myself and said, when am I actually going to use any of this stuff? I spend my time gathering tools and putting tools in the toolbox. Mm -hmm. And then I close the drawer and I don't use the tools that I have in the toolbox. So there's resources I have that I haven't even started using yet. I might also just add to that as well in terms of... Um uh, additional resources available from government, et cetera, that are out there right now. So there is an awful lot of funding and resources and support available and the government were very quick to put these in place. And um, so for example, um, outside of the learning resources that we've spoken about already, but there's also through your local Leo office, there are business continuity vouchers. There's online trading vouchers that are available to people up to two and a half grand and that can be doubled. Um, Enterprise Ireland also have a lot of support available for people if you are an Enterprise Ireland client. Um, and if you're not, maybe you should ring them to see, could you be? Um, uh, and then there's also... Um, obviously the temporary wage subsidy programs, et cetera, that are available to companies too. So there, there's also those types of resources. There's also loans and microfinance. And uh, now not every company at the moment wants to borrow money. And we are getting that feedback a lot through the chambers. Um, and there are liquidity. There's a request for, um, with, you know, in terms of, uh, or a concern around liquidity moving forward and how can the government help the liquidity and cash flow of businesses moving forward. And maybe that's something that we'll, we'll hear more about over the coming weeks. But there's so certainly funding supports and resources available from government at the moment. So it would be important maybe to reach out to your Leo office and or to your enterprise office. Or if you go to gov.ie, everything available to businesses is listed there as well for uh, additional resources like that. That's fantastic. It's for me to come on. That's fantastic, uh, Shona and Dennis. And I've, you've preempted actually a couple of the questions that have just come in afterwards about resources and uh, specifics. And um, people really uh, wanted to know that information. So thank you so much for providing it. Um, it's a different question now outside of business in terms of what personal development could you recommend? Any thoughts on that one? Ooh. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a difficult one. Um... I mean, I can be biased and I can recommend everybody gets a coach um, and I can, and suggesting that, which, which I'm not, because there's a lot of, should we say, um, non, not proper coaches out there. Um, personal development, obviously exercise is one thing, 
personal fitness, personal exercise, getting some air, getting out and about, not just locking yourself in. Most, I mean, I have me outside. I, I, lucky I have a garden and, a, and facilities for this, but I haven't left my house since March 12th when I came home from the college the last time. Um, but <sighs> staying away, I've heard, I've seen this on, on, um, on a number of programs at this stage, stay away from media. Stay away from the negative media that's out there. Stay away from the fake and false information. Validate the information you want to take on board. Check things out. There's a lot of stuff out there that can have us extremely worried and extremely panicked about things. Be mindful of what you can control, what's, in your, what's within your control versus what's outside your control. If you look at what you what's in, what's in your control, that's fine. You know, work with that. Don't go looking at, the, don't take. You know, it's pointless looking at the stuff that you have no control over because you have no control over it. You can make you will not have an effect on it. Um, I mentioned organizations like Genos. Uh, they're an emotional intelligence company based. They're an Australian company, but they're they have a base here in Ireland. Uh, they they do paid courses, but they also do a lot of free programs that are available on their on their website uh, for for mental health and for uh, personal development and positive outlook and and things like that to help people to look at things in a different way. And again, as I say, if people want to come to me. There's a, there's such a big list of stuff. If people want to come to me after this, I'll put, happily listen more to what they have to say and what to look for specifically and guide them in the right direction. Yeah. It's brilliant. We're very happy to share share details um, with all the attendees who want to get in contact with you, yeah, Dennis. No problem. Um, okay, so we've loads of questions flying in here. There's a lovely comment here from Morris. Uh, lots of good advice, Dennis. Thank you. Thank you. Um, then we also have a question about self self motivation. So we've just answered that one in personal development. Um, when setting up a business, what do you look at? Um, in terms of a potential employee that will make a difference to your business. And that is coming from Barnabas. Okay, well, maybe I'll look at that one first. So um, what do you look at in a potential employee when you're setting up a business? I think that really comes back down to what kind of business are you setting up? What kind of culture are you trying to um, develop within your new business? Um, if it's a startup, is it going to be high impact? Is it going to be fast paced? Um, is it very transactional? Is it more relationship based? Obviously, what are the technical key skills that are required as well? Um, so I think it very much comes down to the type of business that you are going to be creating will lead back to the type of employees that you need to then hire. Um, so crafting a good jobs back around the business and the role is going to be very important to get in the right fit is what I would say you know okay brilliant um, question here what are people doing about paying rents rates for offices when everyone is working from home or in a temporary shutdown Okay, so I know we've I've had a, a lot of feedback in relation to this with my chamber hat on, and I know as has Chambers Ireland through surveys, etc. So it's a very mixed bag out there. Um, if if the key thing is if if rents and rates are an issue, uh, you need to liaise directly with either your landlord or your local county council. So each county council seems to have a different way of dealing with things at the moment. But I know certainly the county councils I've dealt with are dealing on a one to one basis with businesses in relation to rates. So if you're worried about payment of rates, do engage with them because they are working. Everybody's working together right now. So um, from a, 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 rate, a rents perspective, um, I've heard varying reports and stories. Some landlords are in a position to have been very, uh, to be very accommodating with their tenants. Um, and I've heard stories of, of the opposite as well. Um, so, but that's on a case by case basis for each individual. I think it's really reach out and talk to both your local government and your landlord um, would be my advice. Okay, that's brilliant. Um, we have a lovely comment here from Susan Madden. Thank you so much, Susan. Shona mentioned she took time out to think. Dennis labelled it reflect. I did that for one week just after the first week in the lockdown and I called it going under to lick my wounds. <laughs> but I came out refocused and fully agree with Dennis's comment regarding this lock-in as beneficial. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> um, there's a lovely comment here from Caroline Mooney. Uh, thank you, Caroline. 
um, useful and insightful information, at, or helpful and useful and inspirational today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, quest, a comment from Connor. Uh, Connor Cooney, great program and insight this morning. Thank you, Shona and Dennis and co. And then Connor also has a question. Um, very often we've been asked, what do I want for me? And I find this particularly difficult to answer without reverting back, uh, without reverting back to the business needs and objectives. Any hints to gain better clarity around this simple question? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a fun one to ask. So that's that's this question. That's the problem that I have with when I ask people that question. They always deflect it. It's because uh, maybe it's a cultural thing, uh, but we don't like being asked what we want. Um, and we find it difficult to answer that sort of a question. It's one that takes time. Um, I, it, it's one that I would spend a lot of time with a client on. So what, basically what I would do is I'd ask the question. I'd let them think about it and answer when they're answering incorrectly because they're talking about the business or they're talking about what they don't want or they're talking about something else. I'll ask it again. And it's almost like there's another model that's used called the five whys when you're trying to work out why something didn't work out. Um, it's like I, I sometimes liken it to the, the temperamental child, the, the constant, you can't have this, but why? Because I said so. But why? Because it's bad for you. But why? And if that continues, it's, it, it becomes this continuous asking. What do I want? Write down what, you, what comes to mind. And if you find when you reflect on that, that what's come to mind, that's all related to my business. Put that away. Mm. Ask the question again. Write again. And in time, you will find that it will eventually, you start chipping away all the stuff that you've had at the front of your mind, which is business related, and you will start thinking about what you're looking for, what's, what's important to you. That's brilliant. Um, we are running slightly over time. I think we'll take maybe two or three more questions and then we do have um, all of the questions captured and we will follow up in a video and uh, that will be posted on the website afterwards with all of the other questions. So it's just a um, comment here from Declan and then a question. Thank you so much for today's, uh, today's Thank you so much for this morning's session. To both contributors, I run a social enterprise which offers outsourced financial and secretarial services for small businesses. I wonder, do you think it is a good time to market and advertise to capitalize on other business and people's recalibration and reflection if there is money to do that? Should Absolutely. I be out there? Yeah, I, I definitely think now is a good time to market yourself. I mean, that's been one of our key things as well from a business perspective is to keep our marketing and our branding strong and to stay present. Um, and certainly, I think those services that it's, it appears that you're in are in demand right now and required. Um, uh, I also believe there's funding for financial advice and services through government supports and bodies as well. You might be interested to maybe connect in with some of the government bodies like EI, et cetera, to see, can you help with any of the consultancy side there? But I'd certainly be marketing those, that, that, that service right now. I mean, it's on everybody's mind, the financial piece. Every business owner's mind is, is, is the finance. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Shona. Um, there's a question from Una Una. I hope I've pronounced the name correctly. Thank you so much for your question. Um, question for Shona. Are there any funds? Oh, we've answered, we've, we've answered this one about the employment um, assistance and subsidy. If we need to hire people during this time, uh, can we apply for funds? Yes, we, we've we've covered that session just a uh, question just earlier there. But I just if I could add to that, Michael, I'm, if you hire, if anybody joins your team after, if I recall correctly, um, I think it's the 29th of February. I, I just need to check that date for you, but they are, they, you cannot get the temporary employment wage subsidy for them. So, cause we had some, point. yeah. So we had some new starters actually who didn't fall within the dates. And so we can't get the, the subsidy payment for them. It's so just to point that out. Thank you very much. That's great to know. Um, and Una is from the Kilkenny Salt Therapy. So thank you very much. It's great to see um, such a wide range of um, businesses joining us today. Uh, this question from Valerie, thank you, and a comment as well, just a lovely comment, thank you for all the insights and agree, very motivational. I'm based in hospitality and the future is so uncertain as to when we can operate and at what capacity. Do we invest time in subjective planning for future or scenario planning? Um, and what is the critical view of that looking when we're looking at the past performance as well? 
Okay, so I don't mind uh, leading in on that initially. So um, I think it's always worthwhile doing some scenario planning. What if this happens? What if that happens? And it's very difficult to be able to see ahead of us right now. Um, I know there are conversations going on in relation to, and we're waiting on guidelines from government as well in terms of reopening. And with the guidelines and those phased reopenings, hopefully we'll be given some guidelines around how that could happen as well. Because it's very gray right now. How do you, if people are outside a, a hotel or a restaurant or a bar or a supermarket and they have to queue to get in and um, there's questions around then that's going to take up pavement space for example downtown and town centers there's um, how do you do that safely and still keep people within guidelines and social distancing um, and then even how do you operate your business even within that because you're not going to reach necessarily the the quantities that you need in terms of for, you, for your normal turnovers um, but I think it's no harm doing scenario planning um, I certainly I know I do sometimes I overdo it <laughs> um, I like to have nearly dreamt of the worst case scenario so I can work back from that and then nothing comes as a surprise but that's not necessarily good for your worrying levels as well so um, but I do think that scenario planning should be done however it, you, there's no point in spending all of your time doing that either because we need to look at the right now and what can we do right now if there's anything at all that can be done as well as the future so Dennis I don't know what else you might add to that as well yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, it, it, it's always good to do some scenario planning, but not to get caught up with it, uh, because as you say, it can lead to more stress than it's actually it's worth. At the same time, if you have a number of scenarios kind of in the kitty, that you know, as th things evolve by the government, you can then take them back out and you, can, you only have to tweak them. So you may be ready to hit the ground running a little bit faster than somebody who hasn't done scenario planning. It is right to focus on the right now. Um, I've seen a number of, of, of restaurants and hotels around here in Carlo, and they have started doing takeaway services, uh, very tightly controlled, as in, or they have a, a refined, a, a restricted menu. You order and pay online. You are given a time to turn up. You, you ring them when you turn up, they come out and they put the stuff in the boot and you drive away. There's not even a, a queuing on the pavement situation. It's very tightly controlled. That gives very limited, obviously very limited business, but it does give business. It does give people a presence that you're there and it can create a little bit of, you know, it's, it's, it's something different. It's not your normal takeaway. It's a restaurant. It's a proper meal. So there's, there's a couple of things some people I've seen are trying. Um, but yeah, do some scenario planning, but don't get hung up on it. And you're going to look at stuff that may come up with some doom and gloom uh, pictures on it. Uh, you know, you have to step back and look, this is just a scenario. It's, it's a game. It's a role play. It's, uh, it, it's moving the pieces around the chess table. And this is what it looks like. And if I do that, this will happen. And then, uh, as you said, Sean, a park it. Don't get hung up and don't, you know, let it take over your life and every, you know, your house is covered in post-it notes of scenarios. Uh, keep it nice and just, do we say, spend the morning at it and then go off and do something else. Yeah, blocking your time. Blocking your time and just and, you know, put it in the sections, yeah. Absolutely. So we do have quite, quite a few other questions and we will get to those um, outside of this webinar today. But just a quick one for Dennis. Um, could you give the reference to Derek McCann again, please? Uh, Derek McCann, he's the... The, the, I think I actually think at this stage she's the Northern Hemisphere representative for a company called Genos International, G E N O S International. Um, he's on he's on LinkedIn and uh, he's pretty much on all the social platforms. If you want to uh, touch base with him or contact me, and I'll I'll put you in contact with them. Okay, that's brilliant. And there's quite a few people here then as well. Um, just saying, yes, it's the 29th of February. So just supporting uh, what you're saying there, Shona. So it's great. It's great to see that spirit of community coming through in this webinar. And that's what this is all about. It's about uh, bringing people together to share um, lots of practical information as we go forward. So thank you so much. Uh, so that's all for today. Um, thank you so much to uh, Ian, Tomas, Geraldine, Shona and Dennis for joining us today. Uh, thank you so much also to the, the core team, um, Sinead, Sean and Anthony as well, who's been uh, answering in the background throughout today's session. So we will be back next Tuesday um, for the session two on what do I want to develop? And again, we invite you to uh, 
submit all of your questions and um, you can get in touch with myself or Geraldine directly through the website um, and those things are shared in the email that you receive and also uh, we invite you to follow us and engage on social media through the hashtag reboot 2020. Um, so thank you so much for coming along today um, really appreciate it and we look forward to seeing you again next Tuesday. So until then uh, thank you and take care of yourselves and stay well.